Hello, everybody, and welcome to the uh, another little rant from me. It's uh, it's Jim Davidson live. Yes, Tuesday night. Isn't it odd? Tuesdays. Yeah, I don't like Tuesdays. Uh, what was the hit by Cat Stevens? Da 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 da. Tuesday's dead. I don't know who that was. Probably some geezer he knew called Tuesday. But anyway, we're now on Tuesdays and Fridays purely because we're now doing Sunday Night Live. And I don't know if you saw Sunday's show. We, we can't get it on YouTube. It's just impossible uh, to do, technically. Well, it's possible, but we have to pay people to do that. And we're right mean bastards here at uh, JDTV. And we're working on some new channels. So... What you must do, you people on YouTube that are sending in the questions, how do we get to see um, Sunday Night Live? Uh, you go to www.jimdavidson.uk. I tell you what, it was a scream. It was hysterical because um, Bobby Davro, who wasn't supposed to be on, turned up. And he just sort of joined in and it threw everybody. I've never laughed so much in my life. I looked at myself on, the, on it because it, once it goes on to the uh, JDTV site, it actually stays there. Uh, forever, you can work. Have, a, have a look when you join up. Look at it, and you just see me falling about. My manager Laurie said, "Are you supposed to be the host, or are you just joining in like the audience?" Well, I couldn't help it. It was the biggest laugh I've had uh, for ages. It was super. So now, because that is an ongoing show that goes on Sunday nights at 19:30, 17:30 daylight saving time. Now that I am a, a yacht master, don't you know? No. Anyway, so that's on Sunday nights. We're going to do Tuesdays and Friday night. A little bit uh, on YouTube and a big bit on JD TV. Now, what is important tonight, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and, and what I want to speak about? I got a call from Paul the Copper, and uh, Paul is a great mate of mine. In fact, he was part of the original Operation U Tree setup, and uh, and we we didn't meet because of that. We met after. Uh, and talked about our shared experiences. And you'd be very, very interested to hear what the copper on the ground actually thought of Operation Utree. But we're moving on from that, and this is more important things. Paul, actually, and a few friends who I've met are trying to, or have, or are establishing a thing called PTSD Blues, Post Traumatic Stress Disorder Blues. When you think about PTSD, uh, if you look at PTSD, one more percent of people in the military get it than civilians. It's 5%, 4% type thing. Everybody suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder. It doesn't mean you've been shot at. But if you look at the police and the prison service, they must go through this every day, picking up bodies off the road, just doing things, being hit, being stabbed. Uh, I saw a thing on, on YouTube today of some people uh, throwing petrol over police officers and trying to set fire to them. What is this? Where are we? What's going on? Are we downtown Baghdad? Are we suddenly at war with our own people here? The police are not the enemy. The police are people to look after us. That's what we pay them for, to stop us being beaten up by bad guys. Anyway, Paul's asked me for some help. So what you're about to see now on the bottom of this screen or somewhere wherever uh, Robert can get it on is uh, an appeal. Now, I don't normally get involved in these appeal things because there's so many of them. Someone stubs their toe and there's a just giving page. But this is, this is very, very important. Sergeant Matt Ratana, a gentleman from New Zealand, came here years ago, an immigrant, yes, uh, came to this country um, legally, I would imagine, and served for 30 years as a copper, ended up as a sergeant, was about to retire, got himself a job in a custody suite, and, uh, and got himself murdered by some maniac, some maniac. Who could have seen that happening? Well, according to the newspapers, and you know what I think about the newspapers and fake news, this was someone who was known to the police. Now, was it because he was from an ethnic minority, he was known to the police and no one did anything about it? I'm sure if Tommy Robertson farted, he'd be arrested straight away. Uh, and, and of course, this chap, um, kills this sergeant. Now, we've got to look at why we're raising this money, first of all. Sergeant Matt had a partner. He wasn't married uh, to his lady partner. His children are over the age of 18. I don't know the ins and outs of the police pension fund, but let's not wait for them. Let's not wait for the police to decide that this man needs a fortune. Join me, join us here on JDTV and Ustream Television to raise a fortune 
for Sergeant Matt. It's going to go directly to him. And it's set up by Paul the Copper, who was once nearly talking to me through bars. OK, now let's just talk about the suspect who tried to kill himself, the fucking idiot, and missed, apparently. Well, he was from... And I suppose the police are, oh no, not another one we've got to talk about, but we can't show. He's from Sri Lanka. He was a Sri Lankan, whether he was an immigrant here or whether he was born here, but it does say he was from uh, Sri Lanka. Now, he has killed a, a, a police sergeant. Does that mean now we all go outside the Sri Lankan embassy and loot it and burn it down? No, of course we do not. We're, we're, not, we're Brits, that, that's what we do. There's gonna be no riots, there's gonna be no uh, anything. Will anyone take the knee for Sergeant Matt? I will. I'm sure everybody will. But we've got to get out of this taking the knee. The knees don't have brains. Here is where you take. You take your hearts and your minds. And come on now, black lives matter. We know that black lives matter. Let's take a leaf out of their book and not have this. Let us protest about people killing coppers. How about the blue line, the thin blue line? Blue lives matter. Please help me help Sergeant Matt, OK? Let's get into it. The Sri Lankans are lovely people. When I lived in Dubai, I had great Sri Lankan mates, and they're still friends. I had Sri Lankan people working for me in Dubai, and we still keep in touch. They're wonderful. Sri Lankan people are great, apart from one arsehole who, uh, who will remain nameless, but he knows who he is. So let's get on with this and make a few quid. And, and uh, it, it just coincidentally as well, that the chap that gave him, uh, gave him the gun, uh, the police are not mentioning too much about him so far, but we know where our money is, don't we? Right, um, talking of people that have come from overseas, let's have some good stories about immigrants in this country and how wonderful they've done. Right, there's two brothers, I've got their names here because they're, they're, they're from India and, they're, and their names are not quite Stan and Fred, so I've got to get it right, otherwise I'll be classed as racist. There's the thing. Here we go. Right, these brothers are called Mosin, Isa and Zuba. Mm. Mosin and Zuba Isa, oh, they'd be worth a fortune in Scrabble, you lads. They're worth a fortune anyway. Their parents came to India with nothing. That's normally the narration of the Indian family that's done well. I know, I've got a great Indian mate that's done brilliantly, brilliantly, and, uh, and, and came with nothing. It's always the same thing. We came here with nothing. Is there anyone from overseas that's came here with a fucking fortune? What do you think? I've got a fortune, I ain't going there. Anyway, welcome to these people that work hard. Even if you've got a fortune, you want to bring it over here. If you've got a fortune, buy a football club. If you've got a large fortune, buy a football club in England, and you'll end up with a small fortune. Anyway, good luck to our new owner at Charlton, by the way. I love Danish people. Or I can speak Danish. I can say one, two, three, shit. Are you ready? <coughs> Und, dut, treat, lut. <laughs> anyway. These two boys, the Isa brothers, they're only going to buy Asda, that's all. You know, Asda, the supermarket? These geezers are the preferred bidder. How much do you reckon? Six billion. If you had six billion, why would you want to buy another business? Isn't that enough? Fuck me, that's enough for me, six billion. I probably wives three, four, five, six, and seven never even got anywhere near that. By the way, and President Trump hasn't paid any tax, uh, and so boo but he doesn't uh, take any money for being president. Hooray! Right, now then, Asda, did you know this, is owned by Americans. It's owned by Walmart, which is the sort of equivalent of, um, it's shit, I don't know what it is. I've never been in there, but they own Asdas. Okay, and just as it happens, those two well-known chancers, Jamie Oliver and Joe Wicks. You know Jamie Oliver, the fucking hell. How is he a chef? Come on, he's, I can fucking cook better than him. And uh, Joe Wicks, he's the... Uh, Milf's totty, isn't he? Eh? All these. What, what are you doing? Oh, I'm watching this Joe, Joe Wicks video. What's that buzzing noise I can hear? Oh, oh, uh, I'm hoovering as well. Anyway, back to the Indian brothers. Good luck, boys. They want Asda to be British.